Hi, welcome back to Homeschooling Homegirls. I'm grateful you're here. Okay, so we're going to talk about the five questions I think every homeschooling and unschooling parent should ask themselves. And then I'll give you um, my answers, I guess, to, for us. Hi, if you're new to this space, I'm Tiffany, mom to three always self-educated kids that are 24, 17, and 9. I'm sharing lessons learned from homeschooling three kids spaced 6 to 15 years apart from a secular by POC experience. Join us as we change the narrative on who homeschools and unschools and what it looks like. Today we're going to be talking about the have-tos um, that sometimes we feel need to be done with homeschooling and or and or unschooling. The have-tos that we feel like we have to do because of what the podcasts say and the blog say and the YouTube channel say um, and all your friends out there doing their things, Instagram life. Um, and we're just going to really get into it. So join us for the conversation. I'm going to start off by sharing our experience. Um, we have radically unschooled. And if you've listened to any of the podcasts before, any of the videos, you know that it was from a colonized perspective is what we did midway through raising our middle kid. Um, that that changed because I started listening to by POC perspectives on homeschooling and unschooling. The difference between listening to a colonized perspective and a decolonized perspective for me has been um, a more authentic way of edu self-educating our kids and um, one that does no harm. Because <laughs> um, listening from the colonized perspective can for me did a lot of harm. Um, to both relationship and my kids' education process and my de-schooling process. Um, so I wanted to put that out there and share. Um, if you are a parent and you're doing all the things that all the blogs and YouTube and your homeschool circles says to do and it's not working, it's probably because it's coming from a colonized perspective. <laughs> um, and so I want to share our experience to put at ease anybody who feels like they're not equipped or they're going to mess up. Okay, there's always five questions when um, I'm talking to new homeschooling or unschooling parents that I think that are really good ways to take inventory where you're at in your journey. The questions, the first one is, um, what's your definition of success? Because we all want our kids to be successful in life, no matter what route you're taking but your definition may be very different from either the other parent or your kid's definition. Um, and that really drives the expectation of learning of what, how you're gonna want your kid to learn or expect your kid to learn um, and how you're gonna benchmark if it's working or not. Um, a lot of people start unschooling and say, oh, well, it didn't work. But they went into it with the expectation that their kids were gonna learn the way they learn or the way that they could go to a family event or with their friends and compare their kids to their accolades. Um, and usually that's not the case. I think when you, just from our experience of raising three kids who have never gone to school, um, they're not looking for approval in the same way kids who are taught at a very young age to get good grades, to get your teacher to like you, are looking for approval. I mean, yes, they're always looking for um, their parent approval to some extent, and that's the kind of fine line you got to walk, um, especially if you have kids that are very different from you. Um, but that would be the first question, like, what's your definition of success? And just be really honest. Um, like, if you haven't thought about that question, like, your phone on for five minutes and free write what's my definition of success and um, for me success is being able to live life on your terms and being able to be self-sufficient um is being able to create the life that you want and you may not have all the tools or all the access that you may need to create that but knowing how to find or hack through it <laughs> the fastest way possible um, a success for me. So think back to your own experience outside of school of learning things and like, how did you learn things? Because you learn some things in school, but like a majority, I think of my adult life in 40 years, 
has been learning outside of school. Um, so really take a minute and like document how you learn and how does your spouse or the other parent learn and, or how did your grant, how do your parents or the other people in the house learn? Because all those people's expectations are gonna be put on your kids. And that's where the quizzing comes in and that's where kids start to think I'm good at this or I'm bad at that. And before you can even get to those, if you don't have to get to those places, don't and try. And the only way you're not going to do that is to figure out like how you learn. How did your kid learn to walk? Did your kid learn to walk at the same time all the other kids his age? Or maybe they were before or after um, when they talked, you know, just was it in multi-language? Was it in one language? Was it um, does your kid wake up talking or does your kid quiet for the first two hours? Um, when your kid's watching a movie and taking in things like, do they want to talk about it? Do they want to watch it? Do they want to repeat watch it? Um, all of those things are ways that they're showing you how they're learning before they're expected to learn. Um, and those give you a really good gauge on what's probably going to be helpful to your kid. What that looks like for me is I'm... Um, I'm a trier. I try to try a lot of things. Um, but before I try, I like to have everything outlined and documented and color coded. And then I do all that and I throw it out the window and go try anyway. And that has always been my process. It's a long way of getting somewhere sometimes. Um, and sometimes all that planning and color coding and binder creation actually is useful for something else. Um, but that is my process. My husband's process, it looks very different, it's very linear, it's um, very logical. Um, mine isn't always logical. Mine, I jump into 20 things and then from those 20 things, I grab five and I try to piece it all together. Um, and so that's what learning looks like for me. I could see that in each of my kids. Um, my oldest is very creative and so her learning process has to do with a lot of creation um, which for me was someone very um, Excel driven, <laughs> spreadsheet driven. Um, my creativity looks very different. So it was something I had to learn how to get out of the way of um, and not have an opinion on because she needed her process before I could jump in. And that was a lesson learned. Um, with my middle kid, he is, um, everything touches the so very unit study orientated kind of learning. Um, he, he sometimes wants help with structure and just kind of ordering things in a certain way because then it can kind of feel too chaotic. Um, my last one is so much like me. Um, we're kind of the same way. He's a doer and a trier and, um, wants a little input. Um, and it gets frustrated super easy like I do. Um, so he's kind of easier for me to understand, but we also it's very easy for me to push his buttons because we're so much the same. Okay, third question. What, take inventory of your fears. What are you most fearful of? Are you fearful that you're taking away opportunities from your kids because you're not giving them the same route that other kids in traditional education systems are getting? Are you fearful that you're not well equipped to handle certain topics or subjects? Um, or do you fear that maybe you weren't raised with the best tools. I, I wasn't, I was raised in a lot of trauma. Um, and so that was one of the fears I brought into homeschooling and being around my kids all the time. Like, how am I gonna handle being frustrated? How am I gonna handle um, being around them all the time? Um, you know, those were, my fears were a little different than when I would go to homeschooling or unschooling conferences and everybody was talking about curriculum and learning and I was just fearing um, more basic need. I think because of my trauma, I wanted my kids to feel enough, like they didn't have to do or meet expectation to be enough. And there was no one telling them they were good or bad, or I really wanted them to feel whole. And I think I felt like the best way of doing that was allowing them to be themselves. And I believe that, um, although I'm not religious in any way, <laughs> Um, that we are all born exactly who we're supposed to be. It's everything else that gets in our way and 
gives us an opinion of ourselves instead of us let, being able to formulate our own opinion about ourselves. Um, so that was my big fear. And I would really encourage you to like take an inventory of all the fears you have, because for me, being able to see them in black and white and then find solution to those fears really kind of ease that part of me. And the most important of the questions is why? Why are you doing this? Because you didn't have to, unless you were forced into it because you tried the traditional route and your kid didn't, it didn't work. But, um, and even then there's other options. So if you chose this route, you did it for a reason, why? What is it? And have that somewhere that you can read sometimes because when you're frustrated or you're feeling left somewhere or your kid is upset with you for some reason, um, it's just really good to have on hand. And which goes hand in hand, the last question is what are your expectations of this route, choosing this route? We all have one. And I think it's easier to be honest with it now because again, just like your fears and just like your definition of success and your definition of learning, all of that ties into what you expect of your kids and what learning looks like. And instead of raising broken people, because that's what happens when kids feel like they're not enough, like there's something wrong with them. I wish something somebody would have told me a lot earlier is to really define all these things so that I went into it knowing what to expect. Okay, so the reason um, I, the last part, I left it the last part is because this is the one I've been listening to the most. Like, oh my gosh, I've been listening to homeschooling podcasts and YouTube videos and all that. You don't need an expert. You don't need an expert to validate your way of self-educating you're you're experting your kid you'll think back when your kid was a baby like when when they didn't have all the words that they needed to, to communicate how they felt like when they cried because they were hurt or they were frustrated like tired or they were hungry it's the same thing as they go i think all each of my kids is exactly that they were as a toddler they just have more words um and more autonomy over themselves than they did when they were younger um and so if you're worried about not meeting all the have tos, like give yourself some grace. I think um, if you go into it with the intention of, although you created these people, these children, they are whole people. They do not need guidance in becoming whole people. They just need the space to become whole people. And so if you have a kid that doesn't want to read, then they obviously want to do something. They're not sitting there staring at a wall. So if they're gaming, then value their gaming. If they're drawing all over everything, then value their drawing. Um, and that's where they want to be. And just it, maybe offer more things in that realm. So like Jade was really into drawing. So then we went to like, um, so drawing to me was creating. So then we tried to find other ways of creating um, metalworking, glass blowing, other things people are making livings off of. It's not that, oh, if you're an artist, you can't make a living. You could do, you could be a tattoo artist. You could do what she's doing now, makeup artistry. She's a hairstylist. Um, um, Dylan liked to create, um, and so that creating, it, but he didn't create them in the same way Jay did. He was always, I always said like, oh, he was, I thought he was going to be like a movie director. He was always up in the air. Um, and that, for that looks like coding and gaming and creating games. And there is lots of people making money gaming <laughs> and creating games um, in the industry and coding. Um, so there's always routes of creating things, even though they may not be reading or they may not be writing or they may not be into math, then maybe that's not their thing. Maybe they'll know enough to get by. And the thing is like, if they do nothing and when they're an adult, they want to all of a sudden do it, then they can learn it so much faster because one, it's self-initiated and two, they have so many more building blocks they can connect together to get them to what they need to get done. Um, I hope that puts at ease anybody who is who is on the fence about choosing to maybe create their own path and not 
hitting all the have tos or feeling um, overwhelmed by all the have tos, like take a deep breath. And it's like your journey is going to look different than anybody else's. And if you need or the other parent needs, like there has to be math and there has to be English and there has to be all the subjects, then, then that's the way it looks for you. And that that's your family and that's what works. And um, I just always encourage people that sometimes when you're choosing this route, it's hard to listen to yourself and follow that inner voice. And like, if you're starting from the beginning, just know that you're the example to your kids. And if you're starting with your kid almost done with, you know, off into the adult world, then that's great too. There's more time to like for them to hear themselves without all the noise. Thank you, you know, for sharing space with me. The purpose of this space is to join others in creating community and expanding who homeschools and unschools and what it looks like. Join us next Monday when we talk about what it's like planning our unschool year. If you want to support what we do, then please give this video a big thumbs up, share, click the red subscribe button. And if you haven't yet, please hit the bell to get notifications for when new content comes out. If you have any topics you want us to speak on, please leave a comment below. And if you want to talk about homeschooling or unschooling in between episodes, follow us on Instagram at homeschoolinghomegirls. Enjoy the process of raising empowered, educated people.